Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Tuesday edition. It's May the 4th, it's Star Wars Day, everybody. I mean, Star Wars does, it's Major League Baseball Day, man. We've got double headers today. Uh, that's what I care about. Baseball, I love baseball season, man. I really do. Scott, how about your Yankees? They're 500, buddy. They're on their way. They swept Detroit. They figured it out. You know, Scott, we talked in our preview show about this very scenario, about a good time to grab the Yankees to win the East would be if they got off to a slow start yep. and you didn't have to pay that exorbitant price that they were, where they like, oh, it was something ridiculous, right? Like plus, like minus 190 at the beginning of the season? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I don't know what price you could have gotten on the Yankees. I actually didn't check that. Um, there are still favorites, I'm sure, but it was probably down to what do you think, like 130? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have it here real quick on Bet Online. I was looking to see if we had it, but point is that nobody's run away with the division and process of elimination. We didn't really like any of these teams. I know we thought Toronto might have something, take a step up, yeah. They haven't really looked it up to this point. And the Yankees, don't get me wrong, this team might not be playing well, but it has the talent to, of course lap the rest of the team so yeah they're playing better but I'm I'm was I was being sarcastic of course I'm not going to overreact to sweeping the Tigers so we'll see what happens here but that segues us into the first game we're going to talk about because they're on ESPN and they play Houston and Houston has Granke on the mound these teams of course hate each other uh this is the first meeting since the Altuve home run I believe because they didn't play last year right so yeah, meaningful game to some Yankee fans. I'm sure you might see potentially some trash cans being brought to the stadium, and you might have a couple of signs and some stuff going on. But you got Granke on the mound against German. Uh, Granke, of course, is still a very solid pitcher. So far this season, 3.44 ERA has looked pretty steady throughout. Uh, you look at his whip, 1.15, uh, which is solid. Did not pitch well in his last start, though, against Seattle, but – uh, he's still done well. Uh, Houston has won four of his first five starts. And German has kind of been the opposite. He was awful to start, and then he had a really good start in his last outing. However, that was against Baltimore, so does it count? I don't know. Uh, you have any thoughts on this one? Because it's roughly pick em. Houston might be a little bit of a slight favorite in this spot. I'm wondering if it gets to be a save situation. Game flow probably won't let him do it, but – I bet Chapman would love to put one, like, right on the uh, gluteus maximus of Altuve, no? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Chapman, truth is, has been kind of just rolling through batters so far. This I don't know if, you see his, I don't know if you've looked at Chapman's numbers. They're remarkable. No, I, know he's, I know he's having a fantastic season. It's hard to believe he's gotten even better. But He yeah. hasn't given up a run. He's averaging, like, two-plus strikeouts per inning. No. It's That's, actually insane, his numbers so far this season. Yep. Yeah, he's been – and Ramon has been very good his last two starts. Got 13 innings, just two earned runs, 10 hits. Uh, he's cut the walks down. So, yeah, there's a lot to like about the way he's pitched lately. Kind of seems like as he's gotten hotter, so have the Yankees. I mean, I'm sure that's just that's just a coincidence. But you knew the Yankees were going to start scoring runs. The pitching – has really kind of been there all year. I mean, the starters have yeah, had a couple of struggles, but the bullpen's been really good. And you knew this offense wasn't going to lay dormant the entire season. Um, I'm not loving. I'm not loving the recent results of Grinky. Uh, he gave up four his last time out, just four innings, four hits, two walks. Gave up two earned and seven his last time. Uh, his time before that against the Angels, Scott, he gave up. He gave up ten hits. Yep. Not exactly. He's not missing many bats. Uh, good start against. Good start against Seattle. Struggled against the Tigers of all things. So overall, you know, it's a very it's a very grinky type season because he's again not a dominant guy at this point in his career. He's a low two probably um, on his good days. He's a high two, maybe even a, a low one. But those two good days are fewer and farther between. I'm going to take the Yankees at a short price here, Scott. I know Houston's actually been playing playing pretty good ball lately as well. But I'm going to take the hotter team at home with what I perceive as the uh, is the better pitcher in this matchup. I'll take the Yankees. Just lay 115. Sure, sign me up for that. I like the under. Uh, total in this one's nine. Uh, German has regained his form. Uh, meanwhile, Granke has been struggling a bit lately. However, uh, 
Granky against the Yankees. As a Yankees fan, I know that that doesn't typically go too well. Uh, you you can look at Granky's numbers against the Yankees in the past, and he usually does pretty well against them. Now, if you want to talk about the Yankees offensively, this team also cannot hit. Uh, the Yankees still rank 24th in the league in runs per game. The crazier part, they're averaging less runs at home than they are on the road in Yankee Stadium. Nuts. Which is really bizarre. Now, Houston has hit the ball well lately ever since their guys got back from the COVID list. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at a matchup where I think that both offenses are a little bit overvalued. Unless Jermon gets shelled, you know how good the Yankees' bullpen has been and the Yankees until they actually hit consistently. We talked about how their hitting has improved lately. They also beat the Tigers 2-0 in their last game, and had about three hits in the game. So I'm not going to overreact to it. I like the under. I think nine's a bit too high. I think this game probably finishes 4-3, 3-2, something like that. Okay. Yeah, and that could be in the, in the one shining the one shining thing to look for if you if there is a, if there is a silver lining is Grinky has been outstanding on the road with a .86 ERA and a 6-1 whip. So um, it's possible that he may twirl a gem, as they used to say back in the you know odds, the 19 odds. Yeah. Um, and this is Houston bullpen. On the other hand, that has been much worse on the road than they than they have been at home. So. Yeah, I like the Yankees. Uh, I don't know about your under. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably rather play Houston team total under. But okay, that's fair. Mm, that's just me. Give me under four and a half. I'll, I'll play that. I'm just looking at the Yankees numbers against Granky. And if you want to go through them in particular, the batters have 123 career appearances. Batting average 235. On base percentage 261. They don't typically do too well against Granky. A league average this year for everybody. Yeah, they're on base percentage, though, of 261. I mean, that's not good. Yeah, Grinky, Grinky is, again, a guy that's going to walk a lot of people. 123 at-bats, five walks. He's not He's not a guy that's going to nibble. I mean, if he if he gets down in the count, Grinky's a guy that's going to challenge you. He's going to make you, he's going to make you hit it. Fun fact, a uh, Yankee player who is tied for the second-highest average against Grinky, Jamison Tyone. I'm sure Grinky can appreciate that. Yeah, one for three. But Absolutely. this team just doesn't hit well again. Well, Scott, the, uh, the other New York team is in action. Of course, they're playing out of town. I mean, not of course. They, they're they perfectly capable of each playing home games there. Um, it's the Mets in St. Louis, and it's our weekly slam the Mets because they can't win for Jacob DeGrom show. DeGrom gets the start against Oviedo. You go through them every week, Scott. <laughs> 0.51 ERA, 0.571 whip, official record for Jake DeGrom, two and two, team record in his starts, two and three. Yep. Now, I feel like I have to appreciate the Mets a bit because it helps me, it helps remind me of like what day it is because every five days I just get a reminder like, oh yeah, DeGrom's pitching. Yeah, okay, that sounds about right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. This is a. Uh, what are the Mets lying in this one? Like 210? Got here. Do we have a number on that? I think oh, it's 188. Okay. 188. Surprisingly more reasonable than what it's usually. You know, it's weird, Scott. It's one of those numbers that should be higher and it should be lower. That's right. Because if you, if, you, if you look at the matchup, uh, he's going against uh, Oviedo, guy they just brought up from the minors. He made one start this year and they immediately sent him back down. But this is. The St. Louis team, Scott, they're playing. They played. Uh, this is their 17th game in 17 days, so uh, they need a little bit of a respite there for the starting rotation. So they're plugging plugging uh, AV, AV, Oviedo in. So if you look at that pitching matchup, this price should be about. If it was, if this was the Dodgers, you'd be you'd be laying 280, 270, mm-hmm. something like that. But because it's the Mets, number one, they have struggle scoring. Number two. This has gotten to be a thing now with not being able to win for DeGrom. It's a real deal. It's It could be a statistical aberration, but we're in the middle of it. Whatever the reason, the Mets are under 500 the last three years. I can't say that enough. The Mets are under 500 the last three years when Jacob DeGrom starts. That's just – it's criminal. It's yep. criminal. So, having said that, I'll take the Mets. Total in this one is at six and a half. 
So my question for you is, I know there's juice to the over. Are we lucky enough to get three and a half in the first five? Yes. With, OV, with OV8 on the mound, I think there's a possibility this is a three and a half in the first five. I like the first five under three and a half. That's solid. That's solid. Um, and OV8, he's, he's not terrible. He's, no, he's, he's fine. You said he made like one start to send him back down, but it wasn't because he was bad. They're just trying I to. Was, yeah, he's like, he was like a four or five ERA again. Yeah, you know, whatever. But the point is, the Mets can't score when, when DeGrum's on the mound anyway. And you know, DeGrum's going to give up, what, a max of one run in pretty much any start he has? So unless you got the Mets potentially scoring three against Oviedo, you got to like your chances in the first five. And plus, based on the Mets' bullpens play pitch, uh, pitch lately, I want nothing to do with the full game under for me. Yeah. Uh, first five, I'll take DeGrom and the Mets' offense for the under. Yeah, DeGrom's made, DeGrom's made five starts. He's given up zero runs in three of them. He's given up one run in two of them. When you look up, it's usually the fourth inning. It's either 0-0 zero, zero or one nothing. Yeah, and he's a guy – he's a guy that – He'll eat innings, man. That's that's the best thing about him. He's he's pitched 30, 30, 35 innings in five games. So Most starters nowadays, you feel good about getting six to Grum. You can know you know he can push seven or eight. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone uh, eight and nine in two of his starts. So that's that's a beautiful thing. So you limit the exposure of that Mets pen, and that's that's what I like about Degrom. So, all right. Anything else get your attention there today, Scott? Uh. Well, there's one game that I am tempted by. Go on. Thought about doing it for play today. Mm-hmm. Uh, decided not to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on Oakland, uh, taking on Toronto. You have Irvin against K. Uh, I liked Irvin in his last start against Glass. Now I thought he's getting a good price. Uh, hung tough. Didn't work out in the end because Glass now was unhittable. But you got Anthony K on the mound for Toronto. K is not any good. He's got a 10 plus ERA. And it's not a fluke. He's been in the league for a couple of years, and he has not been good any time he's been called up. Meanwhile, Urban's numbers are pretty good. Oakland, of course, the better team. And Toronto, I don't really know what it is about this team. I know Springer's barely played in any games. That doesn't help. But this team just doesn't – I'm trying to think of how to actually describe it quantifiably. They just don't do it for me. There's something missing with this Toronto team, and I'm not really sure what it is, but I just think Oakland's the better team. Okay. Every win begins with K. Do you agree with that statement? I know because I don't know. Toronto is over 500. They yep. won three in a row. Yep. But I don't know. I, I just maybe I just look at them and just say Oakland's clearly the better team. But There's, you know what? They're still young. They're still learning how to win. They're every year they're just a little bit better. You know, I'm, saying, I, I'm not sure what learning how to win means because they made the playoffs last year. I understand, but they, uh, they're they, learning how to, they're learning how to grind it out over a full season. Okay. They had a sprint last year, you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, if last year at this time the season's halfway over, basically. I'm just saying, do you think Oakland at home with the superior starting pitcher should be minus one twenty? No, I think we're getting a good price. I think it should be around minus one thirty. Yeah, one thirty, one thirty, one thirty five. I'll take. Uh, I've got. You've got minus 120. Let me see if I can, can beat that anywhere because I, I do like that play. I see 120 on Fandle. Uh, I've got some minus 18s creeping okay. in. I've got William Hill's got it at minus 118. Pinnacle's 118. Offshore looks like it's a little bit more. So, yeah. Then on line, still minus 119. So, you can, you can get it there. But um, I'll tell you a game that I'm liking here is uh, – Is it Kansas oh, City? No. No, I don't want any, I don't want any part of that. Um I want to say and we don't have a number on it. It's Sandy Alcantara going against Arizona. Ah, oh, I have a line. I see Miami minus one fifty two. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I was hoping to. I was hoping other people wouldn't notice that. Yeah, because Alcantara is pretty good. He is. Uh, Miami's also had an issue of scoring for him, but he's been good. Yeah, he's a kind of a little miniature Degrom. Yeah, absolutely. They are just uh, three and three in his starts, despite his uh, sub one whip. That's why I actually kind of like Arizona in that spot. I, I know Alcantara has been really, really good. Yeah. But at minus 152 for a team that's 500 in the starts against Arizona has actually played really well lately. That price seems a bit off to me. 
Yeah, I can I can see that. It is an uh, Arizona team that has played pretty well against good competition. They've, uh, I would I would take Miami if it was like minus one twenty eight or something, but one fifty two. I can't lay that with all. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not laying a buck and a half. I was really hoping we'd get that at one twenty five or one thirty. I'll tell you one game that I'm at, I do like <laughs> well. I like uh well I like the White Sox tomorrow. There's been some rumors about how the clubhouse is already tired of Tony La Russa which I find hilarious because he's been there for, what, like a month and a half? Right. But still, you got Cease on the mound, who had the complete game shutout. It was a seven-inning game, but still a complete, inning sh- a complete game shutout against Detroit in his last start. It's against Hoffman, and Cincinnati has been good at home. Don't get me wrong, but I just think that the awful bullpen for Cincinnati is too much to overlook here. And even though they did perform okay – against the Cubs over the weekend, ended up winning two of three. The bullpen still did not pitch well at all. And Hoffman's been pretty good. Cease has been better. And I just think with the better starting pitcher and the better bullpen, I think that this price of White Sox minus 118 is a little bit too short. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm uh... – I see that. I think you've got you've got the White Sox are a better team. Um, to me, it's a pretty close pitching matchup. In fact, uh, their whip is identical. I think it's close. I just think Cease a little bit better, and I think you can agree that Cincinnati's bullpen is probably bottom three in the league. They are uh, capital D dreadful. Not not good at all. This bullpen, and that's you know, and that's obviously going to come back to hurt them. And they've been even worse at home. They've been they've been six four six at home. Yeah, that's although. Having said that, White Sox bullpen five one two on the road. Mm-hmm. I would consider second five over or second second half over in this one. Yeah, take a live bet on the over if it's like two two in the. Second. That's what that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, watch the watch your pitch count with your starters because this one this one could turn into a monkey knife fight. Absolutely. You have anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Works for me. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Uh, my minor goes against Henkes. I was trying to work up a play on that. I got nothing. I don't, uh, I, I, I'm t- I tell you every time Henkes is just the kind of pitcher that the Royals struggle with. Just the kind of guy they don't have a book on. Doesn't have a lot of starts under his belt. Do you like minor in the spot or not, not, be, not just ignoring the opposing pitcher. Do you think minor actually pitches well in the spot? I, I worry about, I worry about minor against Cleveland. I really do. Yeah, I was thinking of Cleveland team total over, but that's mostly I, just because of looking. I know Cleveland's offense hasn't been great this season. Right. A couple of games, though. Not bad. Scored eight yesterday, five on Sunday, yeah. five on uh, April 30th. They've been playing better lately. And Kansas City, they've given up a lot of runs over the last couple of games. Give up six against Pittsburgh, nine against Minnesota, three against Minnesota. 13 against Minnesota, and then eight against Cleveland yesterday. So the yeah. pitching has kind of started to blow up lately. Yeah, it has. It has. It's obviously this, the part that I was worried about the most, and that's coming to fruition. The uh, the Royals' time in the uh, in the limelight in first place, I think, is coming to a screeching halt here. So we'll see what happens. But mm-hmm. keep an eye on that. But as always, if you guys are looking for more information on these games or any others, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandliners.com, uh, the best resource on the internet for predictive sports analysis. Always free, winnersandliners.com, previous predictions every single game. For myself, for Scott Reichel, and for all of us over here at Winners and Winners, we appreciate you guys watching today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Of course, we wish you nothing but the best. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. All right, you guys have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting.